the market is so large that we feel in the next 20 30 years there will be hundreds of brands as you call roti kapda and makan in that journey mm. uh, as the income level rises uh, you know building homes is a very very large opportunity now we have learnt it across all our brands uh, like whether it is slurp farm whether it is traya nobody has come up saying ki apne kuch kar diya aur ye mm-hmm. you know ban gaya it has taken them years for life in a day of a uh, indian what are the brands they were using in 2010 and what they are using today is going to become 5 6 trillion economy 60% of uh, india's gdp is consumption uh, texting uh, for example right it's a revolution so far as energy drinks is concerned like zudio is a good uh, great example it right? similarly traya is a great example hair loss is a massive uh, problem across every genre every age group right unpackaged to packaged uh, transition which is happening where the new indian consumer is not happy with that unbranded you know we don't know what oil is used there mm. so it need not be the healthiest of food a murukku or a you know or a banana chips is as healthy or unhealthy it is similarly in personal care you know with uh, uh, and specifically fashion and beauty if you combine these two as a space the the obsession of the young consumer mm. to look good So we have Dipanjan with us today. He Dipanjan is a co-founder and partner of a consumer-focused venture capital fund by the name of Fireside Ventures. So welcome, Dipanjan, and uh, Thank thanks for taking our time. So, uh, Dipanjan, quickly, uh, we would like to understand uh, what does Fireside do, and uh, then maybe we can uh, dwell from there on uh, in terms of uh, specific about your professional as well as consumer story as well. Sure, sure. Uh, so, thank you, Navi, for having me here. So, Fireside is an early uh, stage uh, uh, consumer focused VC fund. So, our vision has been to create iconic brands from India. So, we come in early, identify early stage uh, different type of consumer propositions from food to beverages, personal care, fashion, lifestyle, health, uh, and invest at a very early stage, and then help them through their journey and you know help them to create iconic brands. So that's what we do. Super. So we'll get uh, into detail uh, a little later, but uh, before that, uh, just want to understand. I believe that you've had an interesting career journey as well. Uh, you uh, you are a professional uh, qualified chartered accountant and then you started your career in finance with wipro and uh, then gone about uh, working with uh, a couple of startups in between as well so uh, so if you could throw a little bit more light uh, in terms of i believe that wipro was a i mean as of now when we see today it is a massive brand and then i believe you had couple of startup stints in between as well and uh, then you decided to take a plunge into the fund side uh, where you have Joined a fund, or I mean, you are a co-founder or a partner of a fund right from scratch, right? So, how did you go about taking these career decisions? No, I think uh, I, don't, I can't say a lot was thought through. Uh, okay. But uh, you know, if you look back, uh, it seems that I've been part of three startup journeys in the last two decades, right? So, almost twenty years in the profession. Uh, so, Wipro back in the days was a startup, like IT services was less known. Uh, I remember when we were passing out, uh, I think the Uh, aim everybody had is to join a ONGC or a ITC or a or, or a bank. Uh, you know those were the sought after uh, jobs. Uh, IT services that time was young. Uh, you know that was a startup journey. Uh, you know very very uh, very very interesting journey on how the growth of Indian IT services happened between two thousand two to two thousand ten twelve. Then the second phase was uh, being part of the Flipkart group. Uh, I was the CFO at Mintra, but that was again. Uh, while Flipkart and Mintra was already a large uh, company, but that was the startup uh, ecosystem in India, which was uh, you know which was developing at that point of time, and pa- being part of that journey saw how the Indian consumption story is playing out differently, right? A lot of uh, white spaces in creating consumer brands. Uh, that's when I met Kaval, uh, who started Fireside Ventures in 2017, and joined uh, uh, as an investor uh, at Fireside. So again, a very different journey. But one thing common in all three, I would say, was this whole entrepreneurial uh, spirit of seeing, you know, is this the future of what India has in store? And I think that has led me to different paths. Uh, and 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 ho- and where the fireside is today, or the Indian startup ecosystem is today, you know, seems like this is a permanent place to have that excitement going. And uh, and as we see the next twenty years, or twenty 
plus years at India at 2047, uh, you know, where we are, you know, very well poised to become a, you know, global powerhouse. It will be driven by consumption. Uh, India is a consumer uh, country and very exciting and we'll talk more about that, but very excited where I am today. Sure, sure. So, there's a lot of uh, opinions, myths and uh, views of various people uh, these days about uh, two broad aspects, uh, which is uh, consumer as a story as well as, I mean, the funds side itself, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Because I believe that uh, there are a lot of people, uh, there are a lot of facts, but there are a lot of uh, Opinions which people feel that are facts are but are actually not. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so if you have to uh, delve a little bit uh, more in terms of, uh, so what we have started seeing is a set. Uh, so, so I'm a, an avid watcher of uh, uh, Shark Tank, for example, and I've seen a lot of consumer brand coming there yeah. and pitching uh, themselves and their story and their product as well. So, uh, so and I'm sure uh, in these five years you would have seen. Plenty of such uh, stories in yeah. front of you as well. Yeah. So, uh, so what is your opinion as far as uh, the future of consumer industry itself? And where do we stand vis-a-vis our, uh, uh, I mean, other countries as far as uh, the potential of uh, uh, that space is concerned? Yeah. So, you know, as I said, uh, Naveen, I think we are in a very interesting uh, uh, place right now as a country, as an, as an ecosystem. Uh, you know, where uh, if you, you know, just, you know, wind back and take five years back or 10 years back, right in the middle of last decade, uh, you know, a lot started to change in the consumption economy of India because India never really had a middle class, uh, you know, uh, and a, a lot of the brands were distribution led, uh, marketing was difficult, distribution was difficult. So if you see any industry in India historically, you will see one or two large companies dominating that space, whether it is FMCG, fashion, electronics, etc. A lot of them are foreign brands. So money and capital used to be the mode to build large brands. Now that started to change when social media came in, when e-commerce came in. So where distribution and reach uh, no longer remain a, a bottleneck. And when that happened, we suddenly realized as a country that look uh, for everything in our day-to-day lives, we are using products which are subpar, right? Mm. Which are not innovation led, uh, you know, with right, right from the toothpaste in the morning to, uh, you know, you know, go, going back uh, in the, the mattress which you sleep in the night. If you see the whole journey from there, you will see that we've been using brand which not necessarily are great, but that is what was available around us. And that is the journey of the Indian startup uh, ecosystem in consumption and consumer. We have seen thousand plus, uh, maybe more startups over the last uh, five, six years at Fireside. And we see that anybody, any entrepreneur who is able to deeply innovate in that journey of a consumer, you know, whether it is in the area of food or, you know, a health, a health focus or, or even fashion, uh, even shoes, which we are wearing. Uh, and that innovation is just not uh, being another product. Uh, you know, innovation is real either in terms of uh, the use case, the product quality, uh, the price point. So then the Indian consumer is willing to adapt to those uh, spaces. And that really excites us that as we see the next 20 years, there are several more such white spaces. A lot of the white spaces already, already has been taken. And, you know, interestingly, I saw uh, a post some time back. And you say if a life in a day of a Indian, what are the brands they were using in 2010 and what they are using today? It's so fascinating to see what change has already happened, right? So from the tea we consume, to the biscuits we have, to the cereals we have in the morning, there is a new age Indian brand there, right? And I don't think we are far off from a place where everything will be replaced on the shelf or the large brands have to innovate, right? So the bar of just distribution led, you know, putting a brand out there is gone. It has to be significantly innovation distribution led. And, you know, since you mentioned about Shark Tank, there are a lot of innovation stories, but there are also a lot of, uh, you know, Me Too stories, right, in that. So in our mind, uh, you know, the, the right to win is only where the innovation is absolutely real. And that is backed by good entrepreneurs who are able to build these businesses profitably. The market is so large that we feel in the next 20, 30 years, there will be hundreds of brands who will become billion dollar revenue companies. Wow. Uh, right. Uh, you know, and uh, from a time where, you know, scaling to 100 crore revenue itself was uh, difficult. Uh, that is the size of the market. That's the opportunity set. But it is it is not a, just another easy story. It is a journey which has to be built in the hard way. 
So you spoke uh, about uh, hundreds of rand being a billion dollar plus as far as the revenue is concerned. Today, what is that stat as of now? So today there are few, uh, you know, and if I if I to pick few examples, you know, what has played out in the last seven eight years, uh, you know, may not be billion dollar revenue, but reaching there, I think uh, more than the revenue, I would say brands who have replaced uh, a permanent uh, or have taken a permanent place in your life, right? So take a brand like Licious, for example, right? You know, a very disorganized meat market in India now. Uh, so far as organized meat is concerned, Licious is a very, very large name. There is Fresh to Home. There are few, right? But these were not existing maybe, uh, you know, seven, eight years back. You know, take a brand like Lenscart, for example, right? Uh, you know, again, not a very young company, but, you know, a lot of the growth and journey of their uh, evolution has happened over the last uh, 10 years. So, so far as uh, eyewear is concerned, you know, they have taken a permanent place while a Lawrence and Mayo were there in or, or few of those brands were there for many, many, many years, right? Similarly, if you take Boat and Mama, again, both from our portfolio, uh, I don't think they are here to just build a certain revenue to a certain size, right? I think Mama is genuinely uh, going to give a run uh, for their money for Unilever PNG in India because they are now a house of brands so far as personal care is concerned. While well, they started uh, in a certain way, uh, but now they are a meaningfully a uh, formidable, resilient brand in the personal care space, uh, you know, almost 2000 crores of revenue. And there's no reason why it will be a billion dollar revenue for years. Boat, again, is a very uh, iconic journey, right, mm -hmm. where, uh, you know, people didn't consider there is mm -hmm. a space to build a brand like uh, like Boat, you know, and five years back, and there were a lot of Chinese imports and this is, there was Bose and Harman at the top. And then there were a lot of these, you know, fake Chinese, uh, uh, you know, products in the bottom. And, and there was a beautiful space for somebody to build a brand which uh, gives music and gives uh, audio, which the Indian ear is more, uh, you know, uh, you know, palatable or Indian ear need to uh, hear. And they are now such a large brand. There's no reason why they will be a billion, not be a billion dollar in few years. So there are many such stories, uh, not only in Fireside portfolio, but in everywhere. More than the revenue, I think what is exciting is that in each of these stories, but each of these journeys, they are becoming a permanent part of the whole consumption ecosystem, right? So we have sleep company in the mattress space, yeah. right? Nobody has innovated in mattresses uh, since uh, television. Actually, memory mm. foam and television came around the same time, 1960s. Mm. Yeah. There was no innovation in the memory foam. The sleep company has a, a patented product uh, which they are call, which they call a smart grade, which is actually a non-memory memory foam uh, mattress, so which is a real innovation and. And using that innovation, new form factor, new way of marketing, you know, they are a you know fast growing brand in the uh, in the market. So, so these are some of the uh, you know examples, Naveen, why I think that if the innovation is real, they will take a permanent place in your life. And once it takes a permanent place in your in a consumer's uh, household, then you know, billion dollar or not is a number, but mm -hmm. they are a brand which will here to stay for you know for forever. And we are seeing more and more such coming out. But do you think there is enough and more market? So for the, so I'll tell you where I'm coming from. Yeah. Uh, so for example, uh, <clears throat> and I believe that uh, do do you also see the consumer behavior changing? Yeah. Like, or was it because of lack of choice that the consumer behavior didn't change earlier, yeah. or is it because the consumer is becoming more and more informed? That is why these brands are finding their space. Right. Uh, so, so for example, let's say now that boat has come, I mean, and created a space for itself. Do you think there can be? So, I believe that noise is also, also somewhere yeah. getting there. Yes. Uh, but, uh, but uh, you feel that uh, there can be more. Uh, there can be more such parallel brands, yeah. and India is big enough to uh, accept all those brands as well. Yeah, yeah. The, the short answer is yes, and I'll tell you uh, with a lot of statistics on and how that is playing out. So, India is it's the the beauty of the space is that it's not a winner take it all. So it's not that one mama, then one board or one lens card has got built and there is no second spot, third spot. There are many such, uh, in our own portfolio, there are many challenger brands who would potentially uh, oh. challenge a mama. The Nat Habit is a great example. If they mm. execute well, there's no reason why uh, they would challenge mama someday, uh, in, you know, uh, in, based on the proposition they have. So if you see the market, uh, Naveen, interestingly, uh, a lot has changed over the last five, seven years. So you know, take macroeconomic view, India that a roughly 3 trillion economy is going to become 5-6 trillion economy. 60% of uh, India's GDP is consumption. So, you're talking about a 3 or trillion 
dollars of consumption in five years from now. Already, the consumption spends in India of the three trillion is close to one point five to one point eight trillion. Wow. Right? Now, in that, if you take out, you know, staples and farming, lot of uh, you know household like uh, mass uh, 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 consumption items, it still leaves today more than uh, uh, seven hundred to eight hundred billion dollars of spend around you know areas of new age consumption. So whether it is food, packaged foods. So, a the size of the market is very very large. <clears throat> Second, you know, online penetration, right? So, how do you access this market? Now, back in 2017, I remember my Flipkart days. Uh, all of online commerce were around 40 to 50 million online shoppers, right? So, everybody used to sell to that 40 50 million shoppers, mm. and the persona of those 40 million shoppers looked like similar. So, mostly staying mm. in the top 10 cities, earning a certain amount of income. So you know whether you are a food startup or you are a fashion startup, no matter what you do, you end up targeting those. Today we are in a very different spot. So the 40 million has grown to 200 million. So today wow. uh, India has 200 million online shoppers. India has about 800 million smartphone users, uh, which means it's a matter of time that the 200 to 800 million uh, will get bridged. The projection is that by to 2027, 2028, India will have about 400 million online shoppers. You know, uh, consuming all the time. Yeah. Secondly, the offline uh, retail and the trade uh, has becoming is becoming organized, right? So it's not only the 200 million online shopper is the whole market. You know, then there is additional market which is you know shopping offline. But today, the access of offline and the brands on offline is actually also become easier. You know, with you know, uh, like we have invested in a company like Rippler, which, which is taking smaller brands into offline stores, right? So new age brands are also offline uh, today. So there is a a huge amount of uh, democratization which has already happened, where a large number of shoppers are available across channels. Now look at the age profile of that. Now while the forty fifty million look like similar. Today, the two hundred million doesn't look similar, right? So, twenty five percent of all Indian shoppers today are net new shoppers who were not available uh, seven, six, seven years back, which is the Gen Z. The Gen Zs, which are you know people between eighteen to twenty five years of age, uh, are a meaningful size of the whole consumption. You know, based on what report you read, it's any anywhere between twenty to twenty five percent, which means. Almost one fourth of the consumption is driven by people who were not consuming five years back. Now you take the Gen Alpha today, who are people who are between thirteen to eighteen. So suddenly, in four five years time, you will have forty fifty percent of the Indian consumer who were not shoppers as we know it, right? Mm. So there is a huge influx of a young consumer today who is coming into the consumption uh, economy, which is which has to be known and and therefore. Raises the bar and changes the field for every brand, right? Including a successful brand like Mama Earth has to keep thinking how they become relevant or they remain relevant for the new consumer. Second, geographically, India with the infrastructure getting built, the access to different cities uh, uh, on offline retail, online retail. In flip, in I remember in the Flipkart Mintra days, uh, uh, the o- entire uh, online shopping used to happen on top forty fifty cities. Now Flipkart, Amazon, Mintra is present across every pin code in India possible, right? Now with the logistics infrastructure uh, getting built, uh, there is no corner uh, in India which is not serviced by uh, you know these uh, these channels. So access has become easier. So suddenly there is a new young consumer. Who is uh, shopping? Suddenly, there is an affluent consumer who is, the GDP is also growing, so the income levels are going, the saving rates are coming down. Uh, so whether it's a old Indian, middle aged Indian, or a young in- Indian today is behaving differently mm. because now the maturity of the market, the aspiration of the people have completely changed, and that is giving rise to a significantly different consumer behavior across the board. And things like focus on health. Now, it's it's while it's a very generic saying, people are focusing on health. But now we are seeing in our own portfolio brands like Traya, Gynoveda, who are building solutions for solving certain specific problems, like you know whether it is gut health, whether it is fertility, whether it is diabetes. Uh, similarly, on the Gen Z side, we have brands like New Me, who is completely disrupting the way fashion is built in India. Right, no designer, fully AI, tech driven. Getting the world's trend at a no inventory model is an innovation of a very different order, 
right so i will go back and say that the landscape has completely changed it is not only that the volume of india is exciting but the diversity of that volume the mix of you know how it is playing out uh, is very very interesting and therefore when we also invest uh, in our own mind india is three india you know we call it india 1 india 2 india 3 India one is a uh, you know 20 lakh above household. So there are a lot of uh, nuances within that bracket, but that India is you know consuming lot of innovative innovation led products. So whether it is health related, whether it is packaged food. So when you say 20 lakh, you mean uh, household income? Income. Okay. okay. So household yeah. income. So we are not cutting that by geography. We are cutting sure. it by sure. income. Second is the middle, the middle India, right, which is uh, income of let's say something between five lakh to twenty lakh, right, to so the 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 belly of the Indian market. Now this is the most aspiring uh, mm -hmm. part of India. The, you know we feel a lot of the consumption story of India will be driven by this group of uh, group of people. They are highly online. They are value conscious. They are willing to pay, but you know they are price sensitive, right? So I would say it's more value sensitive consumer. So the the need for giving a good product at the right price is very very important right they are not cheap mm. consumers like mm. the difference between value and cheap and then there is india 3 which is rural mm. uh, which is also you know upgrading itself in terms of income but there still the access is not built right so rural commerce for example we feel is an area which will see lot of uh, mm. penetration in years to come and then if you mix india 1 india 2 india 3 Uh, which is income driven you know uh, trying to consume different part of thing and then you overlay the different type of demographic of consumer right so the gen z consumer the you know the millennial who is become mature the kids the teenagers uh, you know so then suddenly this matrix opens itself into a you know a, a horizon of multiple opportunities and that is the that is the reason why we feel confident that these you know hundreds of uh, mm. large iconic brands without putting a number uh, can be built i feel that uh, so i can so i belong to a place named bilaspur from chatisgarh mm. right uh, so we so we used to have a distributorship of a couple of fmcg brands uh, back then and uh, when we used to go within the interiors of bilaspur as well we saw so much of uh, so many fake brands being created and for a rural indian it is slightly more difficult to dif so for example i saw sun milk so i life b u o y yeah, yeah. so वैसे टाइप का जो आई मीन जो फेक ब्रांड्स क्रिएट होता है द होल अनऑर्गेनाइज्ड मार्केट इटसेल्फ राइट वेयर यू वुड हियर यू वुड नॉट व्हिच इज वेरी वेरी लोकल इन नेचर यस नाउ i mean and i'm sure uh, because of these uh, so do you think these will play as a hindrance or it will play as an enabler for the upcoming brands that is uh, so let's address one at a time uh, so this is my first question yes, to you yes, yes. so no i think the unorganized to organized or the unpackaged to packaged uh, you know that is a huge opportunity uh, right and exactly what you mentioned that is the market which will get formalized because think about uh, in a place like bilaspur uh, you know where the new gen z in you know in the family uh, who is on instagram who is uh, actually uh, socially connected to people maybe the rest of india uh, he or she is not happy with that fake hmm. product they need a good brand they are not so much wedded to a certain brand right but they want they, you know when they are eating they are seeing the back of pack they are seeing whether there is palm oil in the snack right uh, you know with with they applying anything on their face or body they want to know that uh, you know yes it need not be the most expensive cosmetic but what is it doing for me mm. right? so the 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 generation change right is uh, you know is leading to this huge adoption of new brand now in a place like bilaspur there is an india one city mm. which is an affluent mm. uh, indian there is an india two city is the question of which brand picks up which segment okay. right and solves it solves it for them and therefore the unorganized to organized is a massive uh, play i will give you certain example we have invested in a brand called soul threads okay. which is a open footwear uh, 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 brand and if you see the footwear market uh, it's either a relaxo type of a brand which is a large successful brand but solving the chappal as we all growing up uh is used to know right and then there is how the, big would be relaxo today so a relaxo would be 
you know at least 2 3000 crores okay. of revenue wow. you can check it's a large brand it's yeah. a very successful yeah. sure. successful brand right um uh, uh, similarly you see the brand like zudio right mm. which is a tata brand uh, scaled up very well almost does 3 and a half thousand crore today right so brands like soul thread zudio what they are doing is they are actually bringing this you know informal uh, consumer into a branded uh, space because that consumer in bilaspur is looking for a good footwear mm. right is looking for a good uh, shirt or looking for a good trouser of course there is a ability to pay of a certain but he is not compro wanting to compromising on on the you know the brand aspect and they are not wedded to ki mujhe nike chahiye or you know i need an adidas brand and therefore you know even if it's a fake nike mm. you know wo oh, oh, uska wo oh, ulta yes. karke kar do so they are not happy with with that right so if a brand like soul thread comes and say hey, this is a comfortable uh, footwear fashionable looking uh, reliable you can go it go for your walk you know why not and that really is the market which is getting created uh, which is in the in, in the value space so uh, i mean in fact my second question was connected on this piece itself now uh, let's say so people also talk about aspiring india right yeah. uh, i mean where i am aspiring towards so let's say if in case uh, i want to upgrade my cell phone yeah and uh, i look at uh, so it's almost like status symbol to own an apple phone apple right phone, yes. uh, now so either i so either i take a upgrade from oppo to uh, i mean one plus to apple but uh, but somewhere i believe that there is gap but for somebody to come and dethrone apple in a way and create so for example in the sneaker shoe market also now there are a lot of people who have aspiration towards owning a sneaker which is let's say between the price range of 10 to 15k yeah now people are talking about uh, उसके नीचे कोई ऐसी कैटेगरी है ही नहीं या तो वो है और एल्स दे आर शूज विच आर बिटवीन टू थ्री के एंड एस्पिरेशनली देर इज अ लार्ज गैप करेक्ट नाउ इफ वेरी रिसेंटली आई स्टार्टेड बाइंग स्नीकर्स और अर्लियर आई यूज टू लुक एट दोज वैल्यू ब्रांड्स राइट बट आई फील दैट बिटवीन दोज वैल्यू ब्रांड्स एंड नाइकी दर इज अज गैप राइट यस अब I have recently started seeing Insta pe there is a comet karke ek shoe comet, hai. Yes. And then a friend of mine is an, again launching a brand by the name of Shoot, which yes. is again uh, targeting uh, Nike. Yeah. Yeah. But for me to move from ab, main Nike se comet pe shayad na hu. I mean, if I am a Nike consumer, hmm. and so you think how what kind of uh, uh, i mean because if you are targeting an aspirational consumer who to yahi sochega na ki main nike shoe yeah, yeah. so therefore i mean uh, if you see that if you see the 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 different levels of consumer right so there is a apple consumer nike consumer there is a if you look at auto there is a mm. merc consumer and a bmw consumer so there is a luxury consumer in india which is also growing so mm-hmm. there is more and more hopefully Correct. the aspirational brand but if you then come down at each level and say that assuming that the aspiration level is same across all the consumption uh, mm-hmm. uh, persona but there is a certain brand which needs to be created for each of them now the way each of these brand will get built is differently so for sneakers if you if you are a, a sneaker lover you will know this brand called supreme mm-hmm. in, the, in the us and they actually you have to apply to be a consumer right oh. you, you can't just go and buy a supreme sneaker right you have to apply saying why i should be a, so it's a so their brand is built on exclusivity their mm. brand is built on uh, you know restricted uh, mm. consumption now if a brand like comet or if a brand like shoot or any of the new brand price does not necessarily become the aspirational value if they come with a hook for the gen z's or for a certain type of sneaker lover right and say ki this is the reason my brand is different right the bar is very high because you are competing with the adidas and nike and maybe a supreme etc so the bar is high but if somebody can create that right at the price point of you know let's say what is more affordable that hook is the winner right and the hook could be exclusivity the hook could be you know something very unique they have done with the brand you know and and i've i'm hearing a lot of good stuff about comet as well mm. right maybe they are doing something very unique which the new consumer is liking more than what it is so 
therefore there is a market for each of these uh, brand uh, it's not that nike or adidas tomorrow will suddenly fade away right uh, they will keep keep going but still has a lot of space for this new age i mean if i'm a uh, let's say an aspiring entrepreneur who wants to build a consumer brand right yes uh, so for instance i uh, uh, now that i think of uh, i knew about snitch even before it came on shark tank right and uh, by then they had uh, a pretty decent uh, amount of revenue right i generally would be so from an outsider standpoint i mean uh, who does uh, who understands that this market is huge but to penetrate and compete with bigger giants hmm. uh, so whenever i'm look watching shark tank also and if a new shoe brand is get or a clothing brand is being uh, i mean pitched there hmm. they always speak about the fact that uh, what will uh, and you spoke about innovation yeah what will stop those large giants to just start another category which will make you die in the market or just consume you as well right right so i will always keep thinking that yaar ek brand banane ke liye kafi zyada paisa ya fir kafi zyada effort lagta hai right so so how true or false is it now yeah see though i would say more than money uh, it is that hook it is like as you said you know what is that innovation factor what is that reason why a new brand has the right to win it is no different than any existing large brand doing it so let's take an example of pepsi so they launched this brand called sting uh, so uh, you know coming back navin it's not that only a new age brand or a startup can do this disruptive there are good examples uh, take sting uh, for example right uh, it's a brand which uh, another pepsi group uh launched i think not more than 3 4 years back it's a revolution so far as energy drink is concerned like zudio is a good uh, great example a eh? 3 4 year old brand does 3 and 1/2 thousand crore so the virality and the hook is important right whoever cracks it whether it's a large company whether it's a startup whether it, you know whether it is a family run business you know so the the level playing field is open right whoever can you know crack that so whether it's a comet challenging sneaker or whether adidas thinking of a very different way and a very different price point to crack the indian market it's it's completely uh, puma is a great example right in the indian athleisure space adidas nike puma all are foreign brands but the way puma has grown and they have uh, kind of contextualized themselves to the indian consumer is much higher and better than what adidas and nike has and they have done better than adidas and nike in india wow so it is about all understanding the consumer and therefore we go back and saying what's the consumer you are targeting right uh, a gen z brand cannot suddenly talk to a you know a 40 plus year old consumer right similarly a, a, a health brand focusing a certain target has to find which consumer would more mm. likely to buy your product right mm. so it is going uh, you know the way of understanding the intersection of what is the innovation and the problem you are solving what innovation is the problem solving and who is your consumer so that everyone for everything uh, in it, i think that is kind of gone and whoever is able to solve it uh, is the is the winner and therefore it opens up spaces for many uh, such intersections okay super so uh, when uh, so which are the specialized so which are the specific areas now you feel that uh, will are yet to be disrupted and we'll see a lot of uh, brands coming in those directions uh, are there any specific areas which you guys are more excited about currently yes yes there are many i think i would start with uh, consumer health uh, as a space uh, you know uh, now the the journey has been that there were a lot of nutraceutical brands which came lot of uh, healthy food products which came some did well some didn't do well now it is clearly moving in the direction of a problem solution Uh, you know type of approach so for example we have a brand called gyno veda mm-hmm. uh, you know which started off as a as a women hygiene uh, product uh, ayurveda based women hygiene product uh, brand and over a period of time they have kind of found that their formulation their product is able to help the whole problem of fertility right so they have now started fertility clinic so it is going deeper into uh, helping uh, you know couples conceive you know using natural ayurveda as a formulation and it's a promise that i will help your problem it is not a general product saying up khao and i don't know what will happen similarly traya is a great example hair loss is a massive uh, problem across every genre every age group right but
but there, it is also the most misinformed segment right you know from a hair oil to a quacks to you know fake solutions the market is filled with you know you know uh, very riffraff products within that clutter creating a brand with a promise with a regime right and what they have done well is again gone true to the solution so they have segregated saying there are seven stages of hair fall you know x 1 to 4 hoga to i can solve it 5 to 7 is difficult to solve so there there's a science behind and a data behind how they go after the solution and then that has resulted in helping people grow hair right wow. uh, so it is not a very trivial promise it's a very deep promise uh, you know so there are many such examples now which are coming out whether it is gut health we have invested in a company called goodberg which is in the hmm. area of gut health uh amaha which is in the area of mental health so the learning for us and the understanding of the consumer here is that there are a lot of large problems deep problems you have to solve it with a solution and the solution is a combination of a product uh, and a consultation layer it can be delivered online it can be offline that's that's the only the channel but it has to solve a problem so that we feel very excited about that you know there are so many such uh uh you know brands which can come which will solve this different areas of uh, health and lifestyle issues and india is again going through that journey of you know you know more and more uh, uh, uh you know uh, issues are coming out you know mental health is becoming such a major major problem across age groups right so what is the more uh, way to, you know uh, you know a, a logical way to solve some of this so that is consumer health we think is a very very big area many many such brands will come but the bar is very high it is hmm. just not that you launch something and ek app bana diya aur usse aapke mental health theek ho gayi matlab that is not the solution the solution is going deeper i think second is the whole unpackaged to packaged right uh, now if you look at food as an area fmcg in general india is a very demographically and uh, geographically very widely distributed and there are local taste and regional understanding of what you know food works in a certain geography is important now we have invested in a brand called sweet karam coffee which is a south indian snack brand now if you look there is while there is a haldiram in the north right there is no large branded south indian snack brand right there is a a to b there are few small mm. ones here there are regional thing and you go to a small bakery shop in bangalore you will you know see that in a plastic uh, bag you'll get some murukku and some mm. banana chips so i think there is a unpackaged to packaged uh, transition which is happening where the new indian consumer is not happy with that unbranded you know we don't know what oil is used there mm. so it need not be the healthiest of food a murukku or a you know or a banana chip is as healthy or unhealthy it is but the promise of saying it is it is has a certain processing which is healthy there is no palm oil there is less sugar there is more jaggery and so on and so forth so there is a a big movement in food which is towards this uh, let's say a cleaner i would not say healthier if not mm. healthier mm. a cleaner packaged uh, goods similarly in personal care you know with uh, uh, and specifically fashion and beauty if you combine these two as a space the the obsession of the young consumer mm. to look good uh, mm. uh, right maybe for you it is sneakers but for a lot of uh, people it could be you know uh, can i have what you call as the glass looking skin right no wrinkles or it could be uh, you know how to use ayurveda to have a glowing face or it could be the trendy fashion they want to wear uh, you know in their everyday life so the uh, so the uh, understanding of global trends the un- the access to what's happening everywhere in the world korea has been a big uh, inspiration for a lot of young indians to the k pop culture and seeing you know and and it's the most fashion forward country in the world so a lot of inspiration from you know global to india but at a price but at a certain affordability so fashion and beauty we will see a uh, several several large brand getting created but here again i would repeat it is just not you know ki one more cosmetic brand you launch it has to live up to the bar of uh, you know of uh, both the price point efficacy uh, solution so science driven if you look at even in the west science driven cosmetics is a very very uh, large space so that we feel is a large space home you know uh, you know as you call roti kapda and makan in that journey mm. uh, as the income level rises uh, you know building homes is a, uh, you know is is a very very large opportunity now if you see the entire journey of building a home so from building the home to decorating a home to seeing what is there in your home 
so which ranges from uh, building materials to improvement products to furniture to fittings to what in, uh, you know inside there is a lot of unbranded uh, stuff yeah. there like you see the success of an ikea right who just came into india few years back and you know i think one store in hyderabad yeah. does more than 500 600 crores of revenue right so yeah. so the opportunity to create a uh, several different home brands right across various aspects of home is very very large so therefore i would say that it is not that a one unique trend is coming out you know you look at every part of uh, life in a you know journey of uh, every indian uh right depending upon their age there is a use case of certain uh, disruption uh, you know which is required there and uh, you know these are some of the areas where uh, we see breakouts happening but the bar remains that it has to be innovation you know just another home decor it, you know one more curtain brand is not going to cut mm, it right mm, it has mm. to be really go deeply and say what you know why am i better home brand why am i better home decor brand for you as a consumer is very important to answer one thing which i wanted to understand the uh, dipanjan now i would want to get uh, about the way a fund operates as well yeah. right uh, so so there can be uh, so many a times when when i've seen pitches and every time i'll keep going to shark tank because that's where i have seen live how the pitch happens it might not be a real vc scenario but yeah. uh, whatever uh, we, we have understood they always talk about uh, what is the market size or is there a consumer demand for a category like this or not uh, or with uh, either you get into an existing category or you disrupt a category right oh. and sometimes uh, the market size can be uh, so for example let's say today if i have to build flying cars for example uh, now flying cars don't exist so how can i define the market size for that particular category i can be competing with a normal car i can be competing competing with an aeroplane also yeah uh, i'm just giving you a hypothetical example but interesting uh, example yeah uh, so so category creation creating brands when they come yes. nat habit for example i mean a fantastic uh, but now what they will feel is a set uh, i might be competing with a uh, i mean with her ponds also i might be competing with a mama earth also and yeah i might be creating a category where somebody using a haldi on their face hmm. might also start using me yeah so how can i define the market uh, size so when such in uh, such in innovative folks come to you how do you guys define ki kitna scope hai iska correct correct no that's a great question uh, navin and and uh, i i don't think there's a silver bullet or a one answer ki how will you evaluate a flying car company tomorrow <laughs> if it uh, if it comes i think what we have learned you know uh, through our you know 1000 plus pitches and uh, you know and and the investments we have made is that if the innovation is real mm. and if the product stands out right so in the case of nat habit uh, you know it, the, the the difficulty of building what they have built uh, you know in terms of the formulation the shelf life uh you know the the purity with which uh, you know swagatika and gorav has gone in the depth of you know you know you know uh, spend the time on r&d etc you know that tells us that the, the product in terms of their efficacy in terms of uh, the price shelf life the price point the adoption uh, even though there is no example of a brand like nat habit but there are enough consumers who are ready to use natural uh, ingredient driven product uh you know will be more likely to buy it now the bar we don't keep a bar uh, when we assess companies saying oh can this be a 1000 crore company can this be a i mean that is very theoretical today in the market right so we look for that hook and that innovation if the innovation is real more likely that the consumer will adopt and repeat itself is higher mm. uh you know than maybe instead of nat habit there will be one more natural cosmetic brand who would have come would have just you know maybe uh, not spend that amount of r&d so there is a very big correlation between the difficulty of building a product uh, versus uh, you know what uh, uh, you know what what can be built i'll give you another example we are recently invested in a brand called illuvia okay right so uh, it, it's again a very uh, r&d science driven company and what they are trying to formulate is is not been achieved by even large companies like l'oreal you know mm. which is in the area of uh, hair straightening products uh, anti dandruff uh, area where there are a lot of ingredients which are used today which are carcinogenic right uh, you oh, know yeah. ingredients like formaldehyde hpo etc 
Now, if you're able to formulate something which does not have those carcinogenic material, it's a innovation of a very different order, right? Now, once you innovate that, you know people are going to salon. You know uh, there is a trend of people wanting to, you know, straighten their hair, etc. Now, you can't really say whether it will become X hundred crore, X thousand crore to that uh, sharpness. But as an early stage fund, that innovation and the R and D is the alpha. So, what we look for is what is that big alpha in that product right the alpha could be the innovation and the r&d the alpha could be uh, the supply chain mode the you know the, like newmi is a great example mm. where the alpha is the way they are you know taking trends globally uh, you know capturing that in a ai mod you know using ai converting that into a inventory less supply chain that whole thing is not easy to build right mm -hmm. uh, it it is uh, it is an innovation of a different uh, order so once you see those uh, you know innovation and we have learned it across all our brands uh, like whether it is slurp farm whether it is traya nobody has come up saying ki apne kuch kar diya aur ye you know ban gaya it has taken them years mm -hmm. to perfect what it is so if a uh, to come back to your flying car example if we meet a flying car company we don't know how many people will be using flying car but what we will test is that what is really the innovation which has gone behind uh, you know uh, making a fine car sustainable hmm. right will it will it last uh, the promised what they are talking about you know is the innovation ahead of its time uh, is the is the consumer need ahead of its time so a combination of all of that is what will uh, determine but we necessarily don't look at tam alone okay uh, india is a very large market you know koi bhi tam mein you know could be one sector if you look at it that way yeah. it's that hook it's that uh, it's that innovation okay and ek cheez aur to me wo samajhni hai ki how do you define a valuation of a company because uh, clearly i mean is there a fixed formula or there is a certain gut call which is taken because uh, i'll tell you where i'm coming from now uh, there are brands which has become a unicorn without revenue also mm -hmm. right i mean uh, just Yeah. perceived value yeah so and there are brands uh, which are doing exceedingly well uh, and then uske baad uh, wo uh, they didn't need a yeah. investor as well yeah. so so jab aap log kisi brand mein paisa dalte ho and uh, sochte ho ki this can be a successful investment for me uh, and how much invest i mean when can i realize the money or for that matter because if they if there is a good investment to you would not want to take out the money also yeah. i mean it can be a longer term play as well so how do how do funds define a valuation of a company when they invest in company yeah yeah so you know i can't say it for all the funds but at least the way uh, we look at uh, navin is that you know consumer companies have a very strong benchmarks when it comes to public markets right uh, so we are never investors in brand where which is which is based on a virality uh, factor you know an unknown uh, large outcome etc we go back to very fundamental basics saying if you are investing in a food company or a health company what is the comparable benchmark of those companies in public markets uh, there are certain established uh, profit multiples which are available today and always available now what you then use that as a base and then you say if it's a leader in the market there is a premium right there is a base uh, valuation so it is always backed by a certain assumption of profitability of this company in the future uh the and that is based on the brand stickiness so if we feel that it's a very strong brand which is in the making and that strong brand will mean a sticky platform a sticky platform will mean more repeats which means less marketing uh high gross margins so these are all the factors which will help uh build a very let's say valuable company in the future which is in line with what the leader of a particular uh segment in public market today is that is how we backwork and evaluate even at an early stage and we also invest in multiple stages right so we are the believers of long term partner of 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 a particular company and therefore the valuation can always go up as you see the brand becoming better and better, better and stickier and stickier than the other way around where we end up uh, believing too much into a particular story and a vision end up valuing the company very high then the company is always struggling to get into that valuation 
and to by virtue of that they will start doing stupid thing right uh, and which is actually the issue of all the potential you know bad stories which has come out of the indian market is is i would say not because the the business is bad or something has not worked out or uh, it is none, none of that it actually all the businesses without taking names have actually a very solid business model it is just that when you value the same business mm. with with too much hope and uh, mm. aspiration mm. for the future that makes the business you know do unnatural things so so we don't believe in that we believe that you start with a very fair valuation which is based on certain market multiple you know uh, you know good founders you can't you know i'm not saying that we undervaluate or cheapen it so we have been very consistent in our valuation in good times and bad times so even at the peak of 2021 the the valuations we uh, you know where we were agreeing with founders is no different than before and no different today right while market has gone to its euphoria yeah. and fomo and all of that right so once you remain consistent and to the founders you say that look we are not a one time investor we are a partner for you in your journey as in when you build the business you build more you create more value and you increase your valuation or value creation through the journey when you use that approach founders are more uh, you know matured and more understanding of this approach then trying to maximize a point in time ki aaj market acha hai to you know let me pick up a, mm-hmm. a money at a higher valuation a i don't think that is the kind of founders you know we are looking uh, to partner with uh, and that is how we kind of look at valuation and uh, when you are uh, so when you invest in a company i mean uh, uh, so so there are a lot of uh, funds who obviously because when you are investing in early stage there's a lot more involvement which you have with the company as well yes, right yes. and uh, and at times what what i have seen is that uh, there are funds who invest in founders thinking that ye founder ka vision hai ye founder ka approach hai which i loved yeah. and that's how i have invested it and then uske baad once i have invested i start using my approach to drive the business then right, right? Uh, because there was a lot of Uh, I mean, when the markets were going well, hmm. uh, there were a lot of funds who kept sitting on founder said, "Ki yar, burn ka hai, burn ka hai, burn ka hai. Huh. Where's the growth? Where's the growth?" Now that narrative has changed, and now a profitability, profitability, and then yeah. the whole bloodbath came in. Correct. So, what would you attribute it to? Yeah. I mean, is it uh, where did it go wrong? I mean, uh, is, is it the founders or uh, being too optimistic or selling a wrong story to funds hmm. or? there is a certain level of ownership which funds also need to yeah. start taking no i think it's uh, i mean it's a uh, two sides of the coin i don't think there is one i think everybody uh, together uh, you know has to be you know part of the problem uh, so i think there is a combination of uh, unnatural or unreal understanding on behalf of investors and funds on how big a business can be how fast right if you fundamentally lack that understanding then you know if a founder comes and say hey i am a business i will become 20x in one year and then i'll become 100 million dollar revenue in two years so while founders aspiration and vision can be so but how real you think it can be is also an assessment by the investors uh, second is there are many ways to go in building businesses right there is a a, a a steady way of you know building you know by block by block right you know, build the brand build the story and what i'm talking about consumer you know even a saas company to today yeah. you know has lot of building blocks to reach and become let's say a very iconic you know uh, product in a saas company now that is never a fast journey now if you value a company which is ahead of its time thinking hey this is the company which is you know next slice you know next uh, next uh, big innovation after slice bread and then you are hoping that it will suddenly change the way and become valuable new investor will come with lot of capital with higher valuation i think that is the root cause of the problem and which is a combination of uh, not the investor or uh, or uh, the founder it is a very you know like a joint problem if i if i will therefore what we have been uh, been very consistent uh, with our approach um, and and therefore while a lot of consumer companies prefer fireside over others is that we have been very uh we are transparent and open with our way of building block and we in if we see a founder is not aligned to that we don't try to force fit an investment there right here is our learning and it is not that we are right it is not ki hame aata hai you know humko sab kuch pata hai in fact we learn from founders more so now mm-hmm. with the kind of uh, you know 
companies we have partnered with and the journeys we have seen we have learned from other founders in the consumer space ki kaise ban sakti hai kitni jaldi ban sakti hai we only say ki ye hamare learnings hain hmm. right if you are saying that okay you are you can do better than this great you know we would learn from you hmm. right but but it it is only a plus minus a certain percentage from what the median is at that founders like to hear because founders then feel aligned with the with the approach of what it is and that has not changed through the market the fact that you have to be unit economics positive the friend fact that you have to build a sticky brand which will eventually help you repeat better uh, these are just the fundamental business of any business matlab it is not even consumer you know even if you were to take a saas company i would say you know if you are acquiring a consumer how would you do repeat orders mm. uh, you know and repeat sale to that same uh, uh, enterprise customer i've seen that journey in the wipro days is as fundamental is your farming yeah. you know better than hunting yeah. like for example so agar wo fundamental build hoti hai in any company there is no reason why it will burn money yeah uh, eventually of course there is an investment in people so we never hesitate to build teams we never hesitate to build the right technology tools within the company those are all balance sheet investments yeah so if you raise money to do balance sheet investments and you build a brand which is moving towards a building block of a profitable company eventual value creation tabhi hona hai yeah now so some uh, companies it may take 3 years some companies it may take 5 years and mama earth has done this in let's say a matter of 5 years mm. it is not that we now we have suddenly a bar ki every company will become you know mama earth type in 5 years then we are force fitting the best possible outcome onto every company and then therefore value every company higher because acha mama earth to billion dollar ho gayi hai so why not value it ahead you know that is where you started to go wrong sure uh, so that's been our uh, conservative uh, approach uh, and we partner with founders who uh, you know align with that and we end up learning more i can tell you right. as a fund we have learned significantly more from our founders every day it's been a learning with a- anybody new and we just put that back into our uh, you know nice. collective learning ecosystem so last question which i would like to uh, ask is uh, let's say if in case uh, i'm i want to build a i am an aspiring uh, investor and yeah. i want to build a new fund yes and uh, i want to become a fireside for fintech for example sure. uh, so so when i am going and raising money from lps uh, what kind of uh, ethos or uh, i mean value system which i should adhere to yeah. uh, for me to become a successful fund uh, so let's say if you have to look at some aspiring funds i'm sure there would be a uh, few right. funds as well that uh, so what kind of learnings which you have to understand what kind of story you need to sell to lps yeah. because uh, i mean what is a respectable cagr uh, which should be uh, good enough to raise money uh, in this uh, in any market Correct. so so what would be your uh, suggestion Correct. no i i think uh, and again i i would not say that i know everything uh, hmm. we are still learning every day as i said but uh, but two three things uh, you know uh, I, i would highlight uh, which actually helped us as a fund reach where we are but more and more, more uh, new funds coming into the indian ecosystem uh, you know i feel that if they can solve for these two three you know fun, you know fundamental building blocks which is no different than any startup yeah. or a company yeah. one is you know have a very thought through clear strategy so if you are a fintech company a fintech focused fund or a tech focused fund a the requirement of a domain knowledge has become much more important today than in the past so as much as a vc or a private equity is a financial services business mm. it is also a respective domain business so for us it's we are as more a consumer company than a vc fund right so if somebody is a ai tech fund so they are as much a ai tech company mm. uh, uh, than a, a vc fund so that Uh, alignment of vertical alignment of a industry and uh, you know vc i'm talking more vc is not private equity yeah, yeah. Uh, so that is i think uh, an important factor gone are the days where as a young fund you are building a sector agnostic uh, fund ki mai ko sabhi pata hai mai sabhi kuch kar dunga institutions and large investors look for this depth of understanding uh second is uh, look at fireside a lot of us are operators you know it's not that uh, we thought that we will become a vc investor we pata nahi tha ki vc hota kya hai it was that the genuineness of understanding a particular sector and helping the founder so mm. why would the best founders come to you because 
uh, because you can add value to them and that cannot happen if uh, you know we don't come from that deep yeah. understanding so it's not that everybody has to be an operator for life uh, you know there are you know you know a lot of bright people who have some understanding and investing and helping them through a journey is also a capability so that building that uh, bringing that uh, domain knowledge and ability to help founders differentially and therefore getting the best founders to you in that sector is an important factor so these are two i, I would say the important building blocks for that the third is once you create a fund and assuming you do that most vc funds in india are in the journey of institutionalization mm. what i mean by that is normally one or two partners or few people start the fund and then over a period of time if they don't build a institution around you then the moment those partners and people start to uh, you know move out or do then the fund strategy kind of then starts to get questioned so institutional investors look that how you're building the next level of team how you're building capability within the firm so it is not dependent on one or two people uh, i think that's a third very important so it's a capability vertical understanding of a particular area which will attract the best founder for your strategy and institutionalizing it across the firm not limited to one or two people if you put this three as the building block of any successful vc fund it may take longer uh, because in lot of case you may not have a track record uh, a lot of institutional lps don't like to put first money in first time managers very similar to a startup journey ki aapne shuru kiya hai idea pe to less investors are there but sticking to your core understanding and not going all the way today if you ask me to invest in b2b saas companies mm. and if i say okay fireside tomorrow is also investing in saas company a i don't know how well we will do this because that is not our core capability and why an investor will invest in fireside for a b2b saas uh, thing there are many other you know better players around that so that is the sharpness at which you have to go with it so these are some of my thoughts on this Sure, sure. And uh, let's say if if I'm an LP investing into a fund, uh, into a completely new fund or an existing fund, what is a respectable I IRR or uh, CAGR which I can expect uh, uh, over a period of let's say seven to ten years? Yeah. See, the normal thumb rule is that uh, wherever the public market returns are, uh, you know, in, in a in a particular geography. So, in Indian context, let's say it's, it's uh, anything between maybe ten to thirteen percent in that uh, area. then a high risk strategy like an alternate fund vc fund should be able to give give a plus 8 to 10% on top of it so okay. if the public market is at 13 to 15% you add 8 to 10% so 23 to 25% is a good watermark but more importantly i think the the cash back or the dpi as we call it right mm. because in vc funds or aifs the lock in are yeah. uh, longer right yeah. so if uh, fund can actually have a strategy which starts uh, returning capital on a periodic basis maybe after 4 5 years or 5 6 years then that's a good benchmark to say that it's not only just uh, a strategy which will give will throw us cash 10 years later but it, you know there is a method in which the fund managers will start returning capital on a periodic basis so combination of a return which is 20% plus or maybe 25 20 to 25% in that range but with a cash flow dpi you know which is more predictable you know you know you know 5 6 years uh, horizon for a early stage kind of a uh, sure. strategy if it's a late stage you know then it's slightly nuanced right? fair enough great thanks a lot uh, dipanjan i had so many more questions but uh, i believe that uh, time is of also of an essence but uh, would love to have you again i mean uh, whenever it is possible in the sure. near future but uh, any final thoughts which you might have had uh, uh, for our audience which uh, they should be aware of and then maybe we can wrap that up yeah so. no I, as i said that you know look india is the uh, is a bright shining uh, spot in the in the the global economy it is going to be consumer led it is going to be consumption led uh there is plenty and plenty of opportunities for all the entrepreneurs uh, you know or whoever at irrespective of whether you are you know passing out your college or you know thinking of doing differently this is the right time to uh, you know start building your own startup start your entrepreneurial journey but the journey is hard you yeah. know and i think that is an important whether you are a aspiring new fund manager or a aspiring new uh, entrepreneur go deeper in finding out uh, you know solving a hard problem uh, then trying to say ki oh 
capital is available yeah. you know let me put something on a piece of paper and <laughs> let me raise money and and yeah. go i think that is where the uh, where the good opportunity leads to a bad outcome sure. uh, i think if you do the hard work of going deeper into the problem uh, understanding the problem which tg why i should do this have a very differentiated thought very differentiated product if that hard work is done that 2 to 3 years of real hard work of perfecting the product or the service or the solution or whatever you are building then i can tell you with very high confidence there is no story where that hard work has not yielded a no. good result i think all the failures are a result of that hard work not being put Understood. right uh, and and that would be my one line or one message sure. for all entrepreneurs uh, uh or whoever is wanting to come into the space whether as an investor also is that there is no shortcuts uh you know and uh, you know iconic businesses can't be built mm. uh, overnight uh, right uh, and whoever is willing to put that hard work there is the ecosystem is today matured to kind of support you great thanks a lot dipanjan again for your time my pleasure thanks yeah. thanks so much